So our next speaker, we've got Nicola Panettiere from Flywheel in the United States. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Nicola is a senior scientific solution engineer, and he's going to tell us about the Flywheel platform. Thank you. Um, very happy here. Uh, I'd like to, to thank the organizers here for giving me the, the opportunity to, uh, to to join this uh, this session here. Um, can Can you see my screen? All fine here. Hear me fine too. Yeah, all fine. Thank you. I'm good. Thanks. So I'm going. Uh, uh, I'm uh, I'm going to uh, to talk about here data sharing curation at Flywheel, and I'm going to try to share our vision and uh, as well as the challenges that we had here at Flywheel when we are enabling data sharing at a variety of institutions in different contexts and so on. Um, so that's going to be yeah. I'm from uh, I'm from Flywheel Exchange. I'm a full time employee. I used to uh, to spend the last. Uh, 10 years in academia did the switch to the industry pretty recently. And I joined Flywheel here. Um, actually, I'm pretty excited here to, to kind of help solving um, the, the issues that we had uh, as researcher to share data and to and the, the reproducibility crisis we went through. Uh, so I'm going to try my best here to, uh, to not give like a sales pitch. Uh, I'm going to try to, uh, to focus as much as I can on the on the on the challenges and like the solution we've been developing at Flywheel to help researchers share the data. Um, just as a at the start here, I just wanted to to let you know what we what what I'm working on, what we're working on here at Flywheel. So Flywheel is basically a data management and collaboration platform for the biomedical research. Uh, it's 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 pretty I mean it's pretty self-explanatory in the sense of uh, that lets you ingest, you know, different type of images coming from different modalities, from different sources, packs, or like even non-imaging, such as you know, any type of uh, metadata you'd like to attach here to your data sets. Uh, it is mostly used by academics, people, clinical, life science, uh, pharma companies, and AI developer. And the application are also varies depending on, uh, you know, your to topics uh, of interest, uh, such as image imaging research, machine learning, or even for clinical trials uh, across multiple center studies. Um, it's very similar to XNAT. Some of you might be uh, familiar with XNAT. Uh, we actually uh, acquired recently the radiologics um, division, uh, which was a uh, commercial entity of XNAT here. And at the heart of Flywheel rely um, this uh, concept of capture, curate, compute, and collaborate. And here's this, uh, this talk today is going to be focused on the three here, which are actually enabling data sharing. Uh, why is that? Is that I believe uh, data sharing, maybe to, for the talk um, from, um, from my, co um, my, my co from the people on the panel here. So sorry, I forgot your first name. The, um, this is about data sharing with maybe external users, collaborators. I think there is also a need for data sharing, you know, in the small small lab, you know, institution, and so on. So we are really moving from the goal is really to try to make the data move from, you know, scanner, so try to capture the data, being on a pack system, being directly as a scanner, being in a raw format which has some PHI on it, and trying to make it available to um, to, to the most users. And uh, so that's the right hand side here. And through this process here, if you want to make your data usable at all, you need to, you're gonna need to, to curate it. So meaning attaching metadata to it, being able to classify, being, being able to, to add some quality metrics to it, some potential annotation, so that, the, so that the, your co collaborators can um, make use of it and uh, use your data in their, in their own application. Uh, as has been already mentioned a couple of times here, I do have this, uh, this slide on, on the FAIR principle. So uh, often FAIR is a prerequisite to enabling uh, data sharing um, and stands for, yes, findable, accessible, interoperable, interoperable and reusable. The one of at least the entry point of the FAIR is to make sure that your data is accessible. Um, access to the data is actually not that trivial uh, that often requires a set of different tools being like web tools cli some kind of api potentially some sdk 
some authentication, so on. So there's like different flavors to that, obviously. Uh, then you, you're gonna want to make your data uh, findable. So by findable, we mean uh, often what, what that means is that your data need to be annotated, have some metadata attached to it. Uh, and the metadata can be diverse and you also need like some search engine to be able to search those metadata and find uh, and discover the data that are relevant to your application. Finally, the interoperable here is something that got mentioned already. This is the idea of like, well, now that I have my data here and I have the idea of the application I want to, um, to use this data for, how do I make, how do I plug my data to my potential, you know, like tools that I'm used to, uh, used, used to use for my, for my research here. And that requires often um, some adherence to some standards and some technology to move this data from one place to the other one. Um, and and um, and that requires yeah classification of the data and and that rely on on the metadata as well. The reusable part uh, I think is often think about as um, as maybe the goal, meaning that if your data is accessible, it's rich in metadata, it's findable, and you handle the interoperability by having um, communication between the different standards, then your data is more likely to be reusable by the most uh, by the the most number of peoples. So that's that's uh, a nice framework to work with. Uh, when it start when when it goes to put it into practice, uh, you're fix, facing a, a a lot of complexity. Um, you have to ask yourself, what is your user type? Is it going to be a researcher? Is it going to be uh, an MD? Is it going to be a data scientist? Uh, when you talked about data types here, are we, are we dealing only with uh, imaging data? Do I need to share also some uh, electronic medical record attached to it? Do I need to share like some annotation attached to it? That's kind of related to the application. What is going to be the application? Are we doing some uh, imaging research? Are we training some machine learning on it? So that's for you know like the, the who, what, for what purpose? And then comes the question about the infrastructure. So like, am I, um, do I have some resources internally? What type of infrastructure can I leverage? Can I use an, an on-premise structure or should I use the cloud? In terms of uh, anonymization, ethics and so on, what is my regulatory local, uh, what is my local regula regulation regarding anonymization? Am I in Europe, am I in the US? Uh, how much, how secure my data need to be? And then comes the, the, uh, the question about the analy analytics, uh, meaning what type of analysis I want to run of my data. What do I need as metadata? And I think here the metadata is last, but I believe this actually is the key. If you want to enabling data sharing, a lot, need, lot of effort need to be put into cleaning and enhancing your data so that the metadata is as rich as possible. Uh, so, so that's... Uh, Basically, the situation here is that we don't have one solution that fits all the different needs that you're going to, to find. And um, here, just is the slides with like all the institutions we've been, we have Flywheel deployed now. Uh, Flywheel get funded about six years ago, and uh, and we've been like talking with every single of the institutions try to solve their data sharing problem. Um, so this is like mostly academic partner. We also have some experience from like life science and uh, pharma companies that would have some startups. And um, what we did realize pretty soon is that you can't, uh, you have to have a very customizable and modular solution to, um, to fit all the needs that the different um, institutions are going to have. So here I'm just listing a few um, use cases of, um, of data sharing um, platform and how they are used. So here is an example at the University of Wisconsin where it's a pretty simple setup where you have a data sharing platform here Flywheel, which is connected to a PAC system on which you can inject some EMR as well as some digital pathology and some red cap here, which is hosting some metadata about the, the session, the subject and so on. And here's a target user are MD, scientists, data scientists, bioinformaticians that are developing imaging research, machine learning, and some precision care application. So the data platform is uh, the core of uh, where the data is going to be hosted, where the data is going to be curated, 
where the data is going to, to be processed and be ready for all those applications. So that's a simple example. Here is a more uh, you know a different different application. So here, like some academic partner, depending on their local uh, need, they can't really have like a centralized uh, place where everyone can access. Uh, they'd like to have maybe a, a secure data platform, which is more internal that the radiology department can use, where the raw data is going to be ingested, where there is PHI living in here, where data curation is still happening. And then you may consider having a dedicated data platform that you're using for collaboration, where more researchers are getting access. This one is going to be, for instance, here in this uh, specific example, cloud base. The data is going to be de identified, which allows for additional partners to collaborate on this data set. Um, here is a third example, which is uh, a bit more complicated here, uh, describing how to handle now the use case where you have you need to consolidate a lot of different data sources coming from uh, different sources. Uh, here is an example uh, application for an AI algorithm for identifying COVID-19 on chest X-ray and not MRI, but same ideas. So here this is again running at University of Wisconsin where you have data set coming from local um, institution, partners, controls coming from open source data set, all of that need to be ingested into a data research platform, need to be curated, organized in a similar ways, so that when it gets shared to the data scientist, which is going to be training the model here, the data is coming into, uh, can be used. It is interoperable in the sense of the different data source are compatible together and training can be, can be applied. Um, so that's actually require a lot of uh, effort here. So here is, um, to show you what it takes to maybe enable data sharing. And this is like a very high level of a view of the different component which are requiring re required. And uh, a lot of them are going to be focused on uh, accessibility. So as I, as I mentioned, there is a variety of ways that you would like to get your access, that, you, that you'd like to get your data um, ac accessible from. Um, you may be familiar with common line interface. You want to maybe to be able to download your data or like import the data from the common line interface. You would like to be able, some people are going to be more comfortable using web browser here to get your data. Some are going to be more like MATLAB Python users. So you, you're gonna need to have some program, programmatic way to access your data through some uh, SDK here. Um, all of that is going to rely on some open REST APIs that are going to facilitate integration with third party. And potentially you're going to want to make the access easy to configure by uh, plugging some authentication authentication providers that you that your institution might be might be using. So this is like uh, only to you know uh, enable the accessibility part of uh, the data sharing. Then you are going to want to make your data findable and interoperable. So for that you're going to need. Uh, rich metadata and um, and make this metadata searchable. So by metadata, uh, this is really the, the I think to to, uh, to to the vision that we're sharing. This is really like the, the critical piece is um, around metadata. Um, metadata in uh, in MRI is uh, actually pretty complex in the sense that um, there is it can mix it can mean a lot of different things. Uh, here I just listed a few uh, few examples. We can talk about uh, image categorization. So maybe you'd like to know um, if you're getting your some MRI scan, scans, you'd like to know what type of sequence that is. If there was like contrast, no contrast, what type of uh, body part it is. So that might sound uh, obvious when you're actually owning the data, but when you're at scale with like thousands of different data coming from multiple sources, you might not even know that all of your images are actually brain images, or like breast images. You, you, you may want to make sure that you don't have a phantom in there, that the contrast is right and so on. Then there is this idea about uh, quality control. Like you don't want to, to you want to make sure that you don't have any artifact in your image, in your image that you're going to, that are going to bias your, your potential analysis and so on. You're gonna want to potentially annotate your image with additional measurement segmentation. You're gonna want to have some specific file type and you're also going to need to have some metadata around the context of the image, so like which patient this is, which time, 
which type point is there an EMR attached to it, some diagnostic. Uh, unfortunately, there is not uh, such a standard for classifying those different images. And even though there is a lot of, um, well, I should say, sorry, I'm taking that, but there's a lot of different standards. There's like not a single standard. So meaning that if you want interoperability, you're going to have to support multiple different standards. And this is why your curation need to be customizable and uh, as automated as possible so that you don't spend your entire time just looking at your imaging and classify them manually. Uh, so BIDS was mentioned here as one effort that helped with uh, standardizing and uh, making your data interoperable. interoperable. Um, BIDS is, um, at, at the core of BIDS is the idea of like, where well, you get some DICOM images that are acquired at the scanner, and you're going to convert them into something that can be, um, that is classified based basically on the file path and how you've been naming your file specifically. Um, so that's going to be, uh, that's a standard which is file system oriented, which is easy to transfer where you have like a, your file on the file system and you know you put it on hard drive, you give it to someone else or you give, or you donate from open neural. Uh, there is uh, a lot of benefit to that. There is also some limitation uh, as simple as, oh, if I want to rename my subject 01 with like, another ID, then I need to propagate it to all my file names here. Uh, often with bids, uh, the curation is also uh, the pain point here. Uh, there is multiple initiatives that get, um, that have been put in place here to help with uh, the curation of the bids. And once you get is in, in bid standard, then this is uh, great because you can use all those bids application, uh, MRI QC, fMRI prep, many others, and you can also easily export and um, and yeah, exchange and share your data with uh, with the collaborators. However, as I was mentioning, bids is um, very specific and static and won't serve all the needs. So it's very tailored to MRI currently, even though they are uh, expanding the standard to uh, many of the modalities. But some people uh, don't want to stay into this very specific format here. So then you have, uh, we are, and this is like a vision which are maybe specific to, uh, to Flywheel. We do believe there is a lot of value in terms of actually leveraging the, um, the raw metadata. And given the flexibility that you need in your curation, what we are putting together as a lot of open source tools here is some unified Python interface for parsing and editing the medical file types. So we've been working hard here at actually trying to expose and um, instead of having maybe multiple standards which are going to address specific file types, specific uh, modalities, what we're working out here is a unified interface to expose and edit and parse multiple different file types. So here is um, an idea for header extraction, for instance. There is tons of information into the DICOM headers, in nifty headers from like raw data files that you're kind of is that you're going to acquire at your MRI scanners. Spectroscopy is the same. So we've been putting here together um, a, this Python package to be able to parse in a convenient manner and represent the headers in the same data structure. So once you actually have this data structure here, what you can do is starting to also standardize how you're going to do the classification. So here is an example of um, the file type. So if you have some DICOM header, often even you know uh, classifying your your uh, imaging from the DICOM header might not be straightforward. So we're putting here together some uh, classification toolkit, which are again like open source. That is uh, that would be uh, hop hoping that the, um, that's going to help the community to kind of come up with a standardized way to classify. DICOM, uh, DICOM files here in this example, but potentially any uh, any raw files and so on. So this is the idea of uh, once you have a standardized way to extract the header information, you can define some specific uh, human readable profile that are going to then come up with some heuristic to classify your DICOM file uh, upon your need. Um, same idea with the identification. 
Often the identification is going to be silo. This is a specific uh, need for curation. Um, so here we are we're trying to standardize how the, the anonymization is done from different file types uh, through uh, a common templating language so that it helps with the identification. Again, open source toolkit um, to help with the curation of the identification data. Uh, here is uh, an example that we are using for um, curating and enriching DICOM files. So often uh, here is a yeah, simple automation around curation. So what we mean by curation of DICOM is, for, for example, running those different pre-processing steps, which are going to be uh, running through the identification step, splitting the DICOM to extract any localizers that, you, that may have made their way inside the, the series, fixing for potentially non-compliant DICOM when you start to work at scale on multiple sources of DICOM, you're bumping all the time into non-compliant DICOMs, extracting the data, being able to classify the images into a consistent, in, in a consistent manner, doing the QC automatically as well, making sure that your series complete, that you don't have um, any, any issues in your, yeah, quality and so on, and potentially annotate your, your uh, DICOM uh, with any third party annotations that are coming from um, EMR or whatever other uh, metadata you have available. So that's gonna produce curated DICOM. And this is uh, a pipeline. So once you have those two automated here, this is some pipeline that you can then run across multiple data sources. So that the end product that you have is this curated DICOM that you can then aggregate across multiple data sources and then share with your collaborators. Uh, if I have just like maybe two more minutes here to, um, to wrap this talk, I'd like to, uh, to share uh, the vision that we have here for, um, for Data Federation, and, uh, which is built upon the, the work we, uh, uh, we, we've been um, doing it over the past few years, which is once we have uh, a set of tooling for making the data accessible and having standardized uh, curation, you can get into the data federation ideas, which is uh, similar to, I guess, the code to data that um, the previous speaker was talking about, which is this idea about federative service. Uh, so the federation service is this idea of linking collaborators through a network of uh, data sharing platform here be, being like flywheel or stack systems and um, and having them given they are going to sh they are sharing the same um, curation pipeline you're going to be able to aggregate those different data source and it was all, as well as the curation to directly infer value from the data without having directly access to the data. So the federation service as uh, we are um, envisioning it is uh, actually multi multiple component. Uh, they are going to, uh, there's a data exchange part where uh, sites are able to share data together, uh, to sh sharing, sharing the, yeah, sorry to be able to publish their data source, uh, similarly to uh, what, what you, you what in a centralized place so, and make them access to potential collaborators. They are going to, there is a part which is about um, gears, which are some principle of algorithm discovery. And here uh, through the Flywheel XNAT platform, we have access to uh, a suite of 100 plus different processing algorithm that can be run then on these different data sources so that you can start to create some federative project which are coming from a variety of data sources curated in the same way so that they can be aggregated and, um, and leveraged for any, any type of applications. Um, I think I'm running out of time here. So I'm going to uh, stop here and um, take any, any other questions if you have any. Thanks for that. There's one quick question in, in the chat, Nicola. Um, so it's from Ryan Sullivan. He says, I know the Flywheel Exchange Inc. Um, is it a sub company to Flywheel like Radiologics is? So the question. So, so we, uh, we did acquire Radiologics actually about uh, three months ago. So now we are a single, single entity. And this is what's, uh, what's making the, um, 
this uh, collaboration interesting here is and why we have a need here is actually integrating so radio chips was a commercial entity of the internet platform we are flywheel the two getting together is now the need for integrating those two data sharing platform together through this federative service so that's that's what kind of emerging from this uh, merger basically yes <laughs> 